Have you ever wondered how the doctor interprets your blood tests? We're going to discuss what the different markers mean, especially towards TRT, after this. So keep watching. Hi and welcome to Balance My Hormones, where we support men and women on the journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hello, and we're here today with Dr. George Tuliatos in person to discuss how to read or interpret a blood test, especially the ones you get from BMH, uh, Balance for Hormones, uh, both, both the clinic BMH Medical, uh, as well as our platform service, Balance for Hormones, uh, support men and women on blood tests. So you can order your blood tests on our website, um, and we also support you, and the doctor supports you in interpreting those blood test results. And if you move on to TRT, then those blood tests are essential to get you to the right place in the most efficient way possible. So here we are with Dr. George Tiliatos, a uh, TRT uh, expert and uh, author of several books on bodybuilding, uh, along with information about TRT. He's our uh, EU director for Balance My Hormones, and we're happy to have him here today. Uh, so hi, Dr. George. Hello, Michael. How are you? So uh, one of the things that have come up, and we see this all the time on our TRT group, uh, TRT in the UK with Balance My Hormones, is um, people sometimes will put up their redacted uh, blood test results, uh, especially after one starts treatments. There are some, some questions. So we had a comment that came from one of our uh, members of the group, and they said they had their blood test results back yesterday. They said, well, I had my blood test results back yesterday. Can anybody interpret them for me, please? There's a lot of red writing. So essentially, some of our uh, some of the guys will see the results and they'll see a lot of red on the blood test and it really out of range. freaks them out. It's out of range, but does out of range always mean a Not bad necessarily. thing? necessarily. Depends. How okay. much and uh, what is this uh, especially? Okay. So why don't we start on, on the blood test that we do at, at, at BMH is the um, what we call our most comprehensive blood test. There are 67 different items on this blood test, uh, starting with hematology, hemoglobin and hematocrit. And, uh, on this particular, Platelets also. So on the, and MCV uh, also refers if you have. There's also yeah. Here. There's also uh, red blood cells. Hematocrit means cell volume. So let's start with hemoglobin. So this chap's on, on TRT. His hemoglobin is 173, and obviously the range is bizarre. It's 130 to 170. So should he be worried with the hem hemoglobin of 173, and I'll also throw in the hematocrit of 0.521. So actually, some the most of the labs, uh, the the laboratories, uh, they have the range of 18 hemoglobin up to 18 for men. So it should be, this is slightly below the range. Okay, so uh, according to me, it's not big deal. So the hemoglobin. When you're especially uh, in testosterone, you, you, if you are a man, of course, you have higher than women. So no worries with a 17.3 of, of, of hemoglobin, okay, unless it reaches 18. Now, it, it, when it reaches 18, you should blood donate. But at this moment, you should take precautiously salicylic acid and 100 milligrams of so baby, baby aspirin. aspirin. Okay. Yeah. And after, if it reaches 18, apart from the therapeutic phlebotomy, he has to um, introduce losartan, which is antihypertensive drug. Uh, so with losartan, actually, you will postpone a regular phlebotomy uh, for one month. Let's say you're doing this every three months, you're gonna do it every four months, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean that you suppress your erythrocytosis, okay? And number two, pentoxifilin for the sake of better blood circulation, you know, intercristatic production. Yeah. And this medication, it's against the pulmonary embolies and deep venous thrombosis. And it's also good for those people that have elevated homocysteine that deals with thrombotic thrombophilia and thrombotic effects, you know, coagulation. Okay, yeah, I, I use pentoxifilin as well. Me too. Discovered it years so, ago. So, uh, thanks to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but now hematocrit is false elevated under the, under the hydration, so it's the percentage so okay, of, the, of the erythrocytes. 52%, is that? Yeah, listen to me. First of all, we need to see if a, a standard parameter, which is hemoglobin. It's a protein that does affect it by hydration. Right. But hemoglobin elevates by dehydration, and lowers uh, by diluting the blood through 
uh, overhydration. Okay, so don't panic about the hematocrit because it's like the total testosterone does not tell the whole truth. The hemoglobin uh, is what is about all about. So a trick to to to, to trick uh, a, a trick in order to uh, lower your hemoglobin your hematocrit just before the blood the blood test is to consume half a liter of water, you know, or more. But of course, uh, this only reflects on the hematocrit. Now, the platelets are an important parameter uh, in coagulation. So for those people who are prone to erythrocytosis like me, they should be kept below 200,000, 150,000, okay, but not, not below this. Okay. So 100,000 is critical. So on so this particular range, the platelets are represented in the units. Um, usually, the, the range is between one... 150. 150 to 400. Yes. Better keep, be kept below mid-range or below 100. Okay. So 150. There's now, some... in order to lower the, uh, to the activity of the platelets, we introduce uh, aspirin, but it doesn't lower the absolute number. It just deactivates them, okay? And losartan, did you not say you may lower your losartan hemoglobin? Losartan lowers, I guess, the side effect of losartan is anemia. Right. So this is helpful for those guys that they'll never get anemia, plus they are having extra okay. testosterone in the system or some sleep apnea. Of course, smokers, but it's something that fluid smoke. Have you seen an elevation in your platelets when you started losartan? No, I've seen elevated. Uh, actually, this is, this is a good point because there is a compensatory mechanism in the bone marrow that says, listen, you have higher hemoglobin, I'll lower my platelets production, and vice versa. After flavotomy, and taking losartan, my plates is slightly go up. But this wouldn't normally happen if you're just on losartan for high blood pressure, for instance. I believe that the trigger point is the too frequent phlebotomy. Okay, so that, that was what you saw so in your experience. So the system realizes an anemia, so we'll elevate the platelets out of a blood loss, you know? But most people who are just using losartan as a prophylactic for maybe reducing blood pressure, blood pressure or maybe because they have slightly higher hematocrit and hemoglobin, they may find they're not going to get an elevation in platelets. I don't think so, no. Okay. The, 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 the triggering point is the uh, phlebotomy because the bone marrow suspects something like a technical anemia. From too frequent phlebotomy. Yes, okay. it has the uh, rebound effect, you know. Okay. So, uh, let everyone, what, what um, can you say about the mean cell volume and red cell distribution? Now, the mean cell volume reflects to the size of erythrocytes, and actually this is very important if somebody has thalassemia. So in such case when MCV is usually Can below you, 70, okay. okay, and you see also in the microscope, this stigma, we, we, we said this, uh, it, uh, it has a stigma of thalassemia. So a, a, a small puncture inside the erythrocytes. So in such case, he should take folic acid for the rest of his life. He has uh, more um, fatigue, he, he experiences more fatigue because he's erythrocytes rupture sooner than 120 days. Okay. And you introduce folic acid to help with the DNA synthesis of the cell membrane to avoid this uh, rupture and this fatigue and this uh, hemolysis that will lead to elevation of bilirubin, okay? Okay, so... Th so th these people are yellowish, pale, you are more pale. Okay. Pale. Pale. Pale, 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 pale yes. yeah. Uh, because uh, the, 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 the erythrocytes have a shorter lifespan. Okay. So the other one that came up, came up on this test was red cell distribution. It showed high, though the range was 11.5 to 14.4. He had an elevation of 14.6. Anything to worry about there? Red cell distribution? Red cell distribution. RD, RDW? RCD? RCD. Or RD, RDW, I think, is the other, yeah. RDW is for the platelets. So this is red cell distribution. I, I don't know. But if it's slightly over, is that your general rule of thumb? If it's ever so slightly over the range, is that something to worry about? The red cell distribution? Yeah. I guess means how far apart are the erythrocytes one to another. Okay. okay? Into, the, into the plasma. Okay. This is minority, actually. So MCV is the most important to see if this guy has... Uh, MCV. MCV, okay. yes. Yeah. MCV. So his, his was normal. MCV. And actually, when MCV goes over 100, you have megaloblastic anemia, lack of cobalamin, okay. low uh, B12. So they appear, uh, the, the red blood cells appear as megakaryocytes. That means they are 
supersized, okay, mm -hmm. under deficiency of B12 vitamin. All his white blood cell counts, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes. Yeah, this is the white blood cells that are important under the, the type of, of inflammation. So neutrophil, yep. elevate under bacterial, these are the 70%, and the lymphocytes under viral. And when you have the reverse type, lymphocytes are over uh, the neutrophils. This is after a viral infection usually. So it takes a little bit of time to reverse normally. Now, eosinophils and... Uh, Eosinophils and uh, basophils? Basophils are under um, some kind of uh, allergy, you know? Okay, so those will be elevated if uh -huh. they have seasonal allergies. And monocytes under uh, viral inflammation like uh, mononuclear... Uh, uh, like um, glandular fever? Epstein-Barr virus. Abs okay. Okay. Okay, so, so, those, those, be, so those are which ones? Monocytes? Yes. Okay, so all these are normal in, on this, uh, this chap's uh, blood levels. So that's the full blood count part, the hematology yes. section. Uh, you know, going back real quickly to the, the, the concern about elevated hemoglobin and hematocrit, um, some, some doctors, I think like Neil Rousier, was also more concerned about differentiating between erythrocytosis and polycythemia vera. Chrysler said that in first place. Yeah, Dr. So Chrysler. we shouldn't uh, say that everybody has polycythemia. Polycythemia vera actually means elevated hemoglobin, elevated red blood cells, and elevated platelets, which is a catastrophic scenario. And white you blood cells. You need to take aspirin. And also, um, EPO is really low, okay? Uh, so when EPO is not zero or not one and it's elevated, then you clarify if it's uh, polycythemia vera and also by the number of, of platelets. Okay. So under such case, you should take aspirin, therapeutic lobotomy, and also hydroxyurea, which is a very toxic drug. Hydroxyurea. Yeah, that kills the bone marrow. It's almost like a chemotherapy then. Yes. Okay. Right, now, so erythrocytosis is a natural uh, mechanism, okay, through altitude, through smoking, by androgens, and just refers to uh, erythrocytes, nothing more, no platelets. Okay. So Chrysler said, uh, he was a trailblazer, said that the good scenario is to have low platelets or deactivate them, uh, even though you have elevated hemoglobin, okay? Don't be panicked and worried so much if you uh, keep under control your platelets. Of course, hydrate. Take fish oil for those who cannot take aspirin, uh, and they have the a G6PD uh, intolerance right. enzyme, okay? And then you may introduce penoxifilin and losartan, you know? And of course, uh, microdosing this also reflects because you don't spike on DHT with microdosing, but DHT is more likely to reflect on the hemoglobin. Fine, or, or if your trough level. That's why nebido kicks erythrocytosis because you introduce it one gram. And this right. has and tremendous effects on the bone marrow. Okay. All right, so that's the first part of hematology, or the red blood cell count, or full blood count. We're going to have more uh, in another video. We're going to go over the, the next parts of this blood test. But for now, if you have questions or comments about the full blood count, or if you've noticed yours elevated and you want to make a comment so that uh, Dr. George uh, or myself can address it, please do so in the comments below. Uh, feel free to subscribe, and we'll see you next time where we'll discuss further uh, parts of this blood test. So, see you later.